Let's review limits graphically. How do you find a limit graphically? Well, you follow in, follow toward the given x value and your answer, which is the limit, is the y value. So you're essentially reading a graph for some y values. The catch is the limit does not always exist. So we want to remember what happens to make the limit not exist. That happens if the left hand limit, the limit you get as you come in from the left hand side, or LHL, is not equal to the right hand limit. That RHL. So if we approach a number from the left in the x value, if we come up to x is 4 from the left hand side and we get 16, and then we come in from 4 from the right hand side and we get negative 20, 16 and negative 20 are not the same. So we don't just pick our favorite number, we say the limit does not exist. So let's look at this graph. The first limit we have is the limit as x goes to negative 1, and it has a negative after that number. The negative after the number tells us which side to come in on. So the negative side of the number line is the left-hand side. So when it has a negative after the number, we're going to approach from the left-hand side. So I want to approach negative 1 in the x value, and my answer is whatever y value we get. So I'm going to mark this all up just because you can't see my fingers, but normally I wouldn't even write on this. I would just be following in with my fingers. Wherever my finger leads me, that y value is my answer. So the x value is negative 1. We want to approach from the left-hand side. So maybe starting at negative 2 is to the left of negative 1. And I'm going to follow wherever the graph is. So as I go toward x is negative 1, the y value that I approach, coming in from the left-hand side, tracing that graph over, the y value that we get close to from the left is 2. There's my left-hand limit. Whereas the one below that has negative 1 but with a positive after the number. So we're going to approach it from the right-hand side. The positive side of the number line is the right side. So we're still going to approach negative 1, but we're going to come in from the right-hand side. So following this graph from the right, maybe above 0 is where I would look, and the graph is up here. So we follow in there and we go toward x is negative 1 and figure out where the y value ends up. So from the right hand side, falling in, the y value is 3. So one thing we get from this is open circles do not matter. It didn't matter that from the left-hand side that y value was 2 and it was a colored in circle versus the right-hand side was 3, but it was an open circle. It doesn't change our answer. Now the last piece says, what about negative 1? And it doesn't have a plus or minus after the number. So really all we're checking is, does the left-hand limit equal the right-hand limit? If it does, that answer is our number. If from both sides the y value is 6, our answer is 6. If the y value is two different numbers, our answer is simply D and E. So you might already be able to tell from the side work we just did. If not, we're going to come in toward negative 1, but from the left-hand side. So I'd hop onto this graph here to the left of negative 1, and we'd get close to the y value 2. And then from the right side of 1, we would hop in over here. we get near 1, but not at 1, so maybe at 0, and follow in towards the graph. So our left-hand limit is approaching 2 whereas our right-hand limit is approaching 3, our fingers do not meet as we trace this graph. The left finger is down at 2, the right finger is up at 3. If the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit are not the exact same number, the two-sided limit does not exist. So we don't get to pick, well, I like 3 better or 2 better, or I like the open circle more. You just say the limit does not exist if you don't get to the same number. The next one is x approaching 3 from the positive side, so just a right-hand limit. So the limit's definitely going to exist. The only time that it is D and E is if from the left and the right you get to two different numbers. So this is just a right-hand limit, so we're going to be able to find it. So we want to approach 3 in the x value and see what the y value is. So we're coming in on the right. 
of 3. So I'm going to look around x is 4. I'm looking above 4 and below 4 and trying to see wherever the graph is. So the graph happens to be below over here from the right-hand side, and we follow it in, and it's going down without bound. From the right of 3, if we follow towards 3, it just keeps going down. So the y value it's headed to is negative infinity. Next one says the limit as x approaches 4. So it's a two-sided limit. There's no plus or minus after the number. So we're just trying to see, does the left-hand limit equal the right-hand limit? If it does, that's our answer. If it doesn't, the limit is D and E. So here's X is 4. I'm going to approach it from the left and the right. So I'm going to look just to the left of 4, but near 4, and then just to the right of 4, but near 4. So just from the left, if I follow in, here's the graph down here. I want to go trace on the graph and go toward the X value 4, and the y value looks like it's getting your negative 1. Versus if I follow in from the right of 4 and go towards 4, the y value also approaches negative 1. So whether I follow the graph in from the left or from the right, as I get close to 4 in the x value, my y value is 1. So again, open circles. Don't let them trick you. We're going to write it twice. Open circles do not matter to the limit. They don't impact it. So that other one that had an open circle at 3, the two-sided limit was D and E just because the numbers didn't match up from the left and the right. This one, the number from the left matched the number from the right. So at that open circle, our limit was 1. So they do not impact our answer. The only way the answer is D and E is if we get to two different numbers from the left and the right. The last one here is limit as x goes to infinity. So we're talking about x going to infinity. So if we were talking about negative infinity, that would be far out to the left. Positive infinity is far out to the right. So I just want to follow this graph as far out to the right as I see it and see what y value I think it's approaching. So I'm not going to start way over here. I want to start to the right of the graph. So maybe at x is 4, the y value is negative 1. At x is 5, it's at like negative 0.5. Maybe at 6, it's at negative 0.3. 7 is negative 0.1. As I get close or far out to that right side, it looks like the y value is going from like negative... 1 to negative a half, negative 0.3, negative 0.1. It looks like it's getting really close to the y value 0. It's a negative number. It gets smaller and smaller. I would say as x goes out to infinity, the y value looks like it's going to 0. If instead this was like an up arrow, I would say, hey, as x is going to the right, it looks like we're going up to positive infinity. Or if this was a down arrow, I would say it looks like it's getting more and more negative. As we go over, maybe we're going from negative 10 to negative 20, negative 30. But this looks like it's leveling out at zero. It's like a negative 0.5, negative 0.3, negative 0.1, negative 0.05. It's definitely getting really close to zero as we follow it out to the right. So there's a summary, follow toward x, and your answer is whatever y value you get close to. The only time the answer is d and e is when you have a two-sided limit and your fingers don't meet. You fall in from the left, and you get a different answer compared as if you fall in from the right. Then the two-sided limit is d and e. Otherwise, if you get to the same number, whether it's an open, closed circle, or just a regular part of the line, as long as you get to the same number from the left and the right, the limit does exist. A positive after the number indicates a right-hand limit. A negative after the number indicates a left-hand limit.